Hello, this is Hague Boy Studios. Today we're going to do a quick short tutorial on using Blender Video Sequence Editor. Blender is primarily known as a 3D animation software, but they do have a video editor. So if you don't own any video making programs such as Sony's Vega, you can um, use Blender to do some very simple things. Blender is a free program to get off the internet. So let's get in. We're going to do just a slideshow presentation, not really a screen capture. So get to your internet and open up a browser and you'll be browsing for Blender. B-L-E-N-D-E-R. Hopefully the first search result will be blender.org. So go ahead, click on it, and that'll take you to Blender's website. And there, conveniently located in the middle, a smidgen to the right off center, is the blue button that says Download 2.79B. So click that, and of course it's going to download a file into your download program. Open up your Downloads folder, and in there you will find a Windows installer program titled Blender 2.79. So it's a self-installing software, so all you have to do is click on it, and it will install, and you'll be ready to go from there. Once Blender has been installed, of course, open it up. And what you're going to find is you'll be greeted by a splash screen with Agent 327, He's an animated short that was completely done in Blender in their 3D animation process. Don't have to do anything to that splash screen. What we want to do is come up here to the upper left. There's the word default and there's a little uh, icon next to it. You're going to click on the icon and it will give you choices. We're going to go down to the bottom to video editing. Click on that and it brings up the video editing screen where we'll be adding our images and then string them all together and create a movie. To add a screenshot image, down at the bottom, you'll see View, Select, Marker, but we're going to click on the Add, and it's going to ask us what do we want to add. You can add a sound strip, so music or the recording that I'm making right now, an image, which is what we're going to choose for this tutorial. Also then, if you have a completed movie, like when we've done a few things, we have sections of the movie we record, we can just string movies together to make one longer movie. But we're going to go click on image and it's going to bring up just another um, browser folder. So you can find where your images are kept in that folder. Over on the left, once you've been using it, there are some shortcuts and bookmarks and things of that nature. But you find your folder where your um, image is and you're going to just click on the image. It'll turn orange. And then in the upper right hand side, there's the button saying add image strip. So we only have one image. So we click it and what it does then, you'll see it'll come back to the screen. That was the add, but now you'll see the purple bar there. That's now your image and it defaults it for 26 frames. But the nice thing is then we can stretch it. Let's do that now. So we can take our cursor and get it to the end right hand side of that bar. Just click it, hold it, and then it'll stretch as you drag it when you hold it. So you can drag it out to however long you want. And that'll be basically how long that frame stays on the screen. Then what you can do is we'll keep adding as many different images as we need. So we're going back to add image open our folder, find the next picture that we want to add. When you add single images at a time, they stack up on each other so that you're going to get a second purple bar, but it's above the first one. Of course, we can now, in the middle, hover over with our mouse, left mouse it, and we can drag it over to the end on that first line. So now your first image will be there and your second image will be behind it. Of course, we can also stretch that one as long as we need. And this process is just repeated however many screens you got. This video, I think, has 25 different screens, so I had to do that add process 25 different times. 
of course, we talked about adding sounds. So once again, add sound, find where your sound is in whatever folder, and click on it, and it comes in again, above, again, the purple bar. But this time you'll notice the sound is a greenish teal color. Being sound, you want to put it on a different layer so that it will play on top of the images to create a background music or, in this case, my voice. So finally, after adding all your images, we're actually going to create our movie. First of all, if you look at very, very bottom of the screen, you see a start and an end. What you can do, you have to, the start's always going to default to one, but you have to tell it when do you want the movie to stop. The easy way is you just right mouse at the end of that purple strip and then come down in the timeline down here and you just hit E and it automatically crops it to the end. So you're instead of 250 or 10,000, it'll crop it to 500. Of course, on the end down there, you can actually type it in manually. After setting the beginning and ending frame number, we have to give the program some parameters of how to create our movie. You see the big gray splotch on the left? Next to view, there's a button there, so we can choose the properties. And here's where we're going to tell the software how to output your final movie. First, we're going to choose our dimensions. I think since all TVs now are 1920 by 1080 and referred to as 1080p, that's what we want for our X and our Y, 1920 by 1080. And then underneath to the right is frame rate. That's how many frames per second you're going to render. These are just still images, so you can go as low as 10 is what I use. But you got to make sure then that your image is stretched out enough frames to cover how long you want. Below that, scroll down a bit, you're going to see output. You can change your folder there. Right now, the software always defaults to the TMP folder, which is located in your root C dr drive. And then the lastly, our major thing we have to do is tell it what kind of movie to create. The default is always PNG. So we click on the PNG. And last one on our list is the MPEG video. So that's what we want to choose as an option. So now it knows to make a movie. But what kind of movie? Are you doing a QuickTime or an AVI? No, we want to make up just a standard MPEG-4. So under the encoding button, click encoding, you'll see it comes up with a lot of different choices. Instead of the Mastroska, or however you pronounce it, come on down, click on it, and choose MPEG-4. And then output quality, the middle of the three, I always use perpetually lossless. I've had trouble in it making movies loss, so lossless, so I use perpetual. And lastly, you have to scroll down a bit more. You'll have your audio codex. So if you do have sound on your movie, instead of none, you need to click it and change it to MP3. So that's all the settings we have to do. Finally, time to create our movie. All the way up to the top, left-hand side, you'll see File Render Window. We're going to click Render, and then we're going to Render Animation. So when you click that, you'll see the line, the time strip down at the bottom. It'll start moving across however many frames you told it. When it's at the end, it'll stop. Your movie is now complete. So you can go out to the C drive and look in the TMP folder, and you should see an MPEG-4 movie that you can use and publish to the web or put it on your laptop and do a demonstration, or send it to a colleague. Hope this helped, and you kind of get an idea of how to use the video software from Blender. Once again, a free program, and if it does very simple stuff, it's not as powerful, but if you don't want to go spend $150 for professional software, here's a good option and alternative to free. Thanks for listening. Hope this helped. Hey Boy Studios, out.